AI and Crypto Global Latin Practices for Regulation, Taxation, Incorporation and Licensing going to be discussing AI and crypto, global slash LATAM practices for regulation, taxation, incorporation, and licensing. This might let you know that. AI and crypto, global LATAM practices for regulation, taxation, incorporation, and licensing. There we go. Okay, so let's put our hands together for our next speaker. We've met quite a few times before. She's an amazing speaker. So a big round of applause for Jaguar Adva Gao, the CEO of Jaguar Reg and Comp. So welcome, Jaguar. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. On heels is better. It's harder to go up here. Hi, everyone. It is always the hardest slot talking after Cal Evans, because uh, he's really amazing and, and entertaining and, and brilliant. But I'll face the challenge, and we all lawyers always try to tell you, hey, stay up with us, it's not gonna be boring. But I look at my law firm and my law work and accounting work, which could have been even worse, and, and financial one, as the most exciting of them all. Why would that be? Because we are the enablers. You all, the crypto maxis, the gaming maxis, the gamblers, whatever, you are the like fighting forces and we are the support team. And uh, if we weren't there, you know, the regulators would have gotten you. So what I want to talk about is, um, oh, why do we jump all the way there? Who's, oh, okay, that's a start. Is it okay? All right, cool. So. Uh, I want to talk about the similarities, because if I were to give you a lesson about uh, gaming regulation, e you would only send here a legal system, your compliance, your regulatory re regulation um, department, etc. And for us, the players, it would be, you know, less, you know, a bit boring, because we have the others working for us, doing this for us. And if I were to talk to you about AI regulation, it would be, it might be too theoretical as of now, and crypto as well. So, what I want to show us I regard us as the business people, the people actually doing the transactions, the games, the, the gambling, the, the betting, everything. We're actually developing this and doing this and making money off of it. Uh, I want to show us the, the, the not just uh, the similarities and the differences and to see how we can make it work. Um, so, but uh, first I'll start with a preface of what it is. I will skip some of the very hardcore legal uh, uh, slides because what we want is something useful, how we can use it, right? So let's start, right? First of all, the problem with regulation, gaming related, gambling related, betting, AI coming soon as well, and crypto related, is that it is way too slow rather than compared to technology. And in the meanwhile, in the meantime, until it is fully developed, by the time it's developed, by the way, technology reaches like seven years onwards already. But what we do in the meantime, during all those phases of times, is regulators apply current regulation, old school, old style regulation, over new technology. And it claims to be the pride of every regulator, no offense taken to the ones here that I know are working with the regulators. Uh, the point of view is that we're technology agnostic, we don't care but the technology because the concepts, the legal concepts of morality, laws, and, uh, and you know, what's right and what's wrong should be the same regardless of technology. However, some of the technologies challenge that concept uh, and offer or require new rules to, to uh, deal with that. So uh, that's the issue with technology, with uh, regulation usually. All right, I wanna give, you, uh, give us an example and my harsh opinion upon it of some other countries, very, very few, and then take it to Brazil, because we're here in Brazil, um, but the concepts are quite similar. The United States, which is, uh, as of now, still considers itself the largest continent and um, the largest empire, deals with regulation by enforcement, which means 
it says to the players, we're not going to tell you what to do. Exactly, because we're technology agnostic. We're not supposed to be knowing the best about crypto and gaming and gambling as well. We we're just going to tell you that uh, if you were wrong or right afterwards, after you put millions or billions of money in advertising, in marketing, in building and, and penetrating and entering the market and working on it and employing C-level um, people with you, paying them, paying a lot of DNOs insurance uh, for them, and then we might have uh, put them in jail or something like that, right? So um, this is the uh, regulation by enforcement. Uh, you could understand from uh, the way I've uh, described it that I least support that kind of a regulation. I think uh, any industry will develop faster, better, with a regulation that states the rules, what's right and what's wrong in advance and not being afraid of changes during time and make it flexible enough, like as a framework, to update it with changes which would only be future looking and not uh, uh, previously and, and past looking. So, um, I'm looking at how the SEC uh, in the United States, just I'm talking about crypto right now, uh, and I'll talk about gaming as well. Um, for the same cryptocurrency, the SEC might review it, for example, as a security, while um, the CFTC will take it as a commodity. The Treasury will call it a currency because it undermines the sovereignty of the country, could be. And the IRS will look at it uh, you know, as a property and you need to pay uh, capital gains tax or other taxes. So as of now, it could be confusing already. The point of view of regulators would be that um, that is fine, but the whole point is what is the purpose, what it does, what the that asset is actually doing, and by that we will classify it and therefore regulate it accordingly. So, um, VASPs, for example, VASPs are virtual assets service providers or with the newest uh, fashion of uh, the EU, um, according to MICA laws, uh, they're called CASPs, crypto assets service provider, but whatever name you call it, they're service providers, we need them, unless we're going on a DeFi, and I will talk about it later, and they serve the industry. They are the main players of the industry because any one player who trades, or the biggest traders, the pension funds, maybe trust funds, hedge funds, who are trading, um, they could be great, but they couldn't do anything without a platform, without an exchange, without those service providers. So very brutally talking about it, if you kill the service providers, you kill the industry. Or on the other hand, in a positive point of view, you enable the service providers to act and perform, and perform fairly and well, and be regulated quickly enough and well enough, and you know, by the laws, then you encourage that industry, you take out the bad players out of that uh, game, I would say, and you leave only the good ones. However, as I think Carlos mentioned in the previous uh, presentation, that is great to get a license to be registered, to be incorporated, to be taxed and to be banked, which is very, very difficult. However, this leaves out the smaller players because it takes a while, it takes an uncertainty, and it takes a lot of funds, a lot of money, uh, not just to pay us, the service providers, like lawyers, uh, accountants, regulation advisors, et cetera, and investment advisors. Not just that, the fact that you won't be able to fully, safely penetrate a market in the first year and a half, two years and a half, and you'll put a lot of money into getting a mass, critical mass of, of um, players and, and customers and clients, but then you might find out you, you know, it's totally illegit and you have to uh, move to another country. It happened a lot to service providers. Therefore, only the really large ones will dare to take those risks. And in an industry that does not uh, encourage startups and innovation and new, younger players, uh, I'd say poorer kind of a players, and um, who are more stressed with the funds, then you're kind of closing this only to the large corporates, which is, I could say, a very American way. It could be really great or really bad. It depends on your point of view. Um, but this um, takes out, excludes a lot of players from the game, specifically startups and smaller ones. 
which do, in that case, they go to European countries uh, and then they can adhere to MICA rules or they go to other countries, Asia, Africa, where the, uh, or South America or Central America, where regulation is just developing. So we are he we're here in Brazil, we're April 2024, and um, regulation is developing here. I started with the content of my presentation and I've skipped to tell you who I am and why we should be listening to me at all. I tell this to my kids always, so if it works on them, uh, it could work with us. So I'm skipping into it now. Why should we listen to what I'm going to say from now on? Because up until now, it was just a preface. Uh, not just that I'm a lawyer and a CPA, um, I'm part of the board, the managing board member of the Israel FinTech Center, and I'm the CEO of Jaguar Lawyers and Jaguar Reagan Comp, and ever since 2015, I've been incorporating crypto companies, high-risk companies, gaming, gambling companies, and very recently in the last three and a half years, AI companies, uh, in various jurisdictions in the world. And that's a problematic statement. The fact that I need to say in various jurisdictions in the world and not in a one specific country actually gives us a, a clue that the countries in which you can and should and you better be incorporated and or licensed and to be considered legit, the fact that the list of that, those uh, countries changes means that there's a lot of still instability because regulation changes in, in each of the one, one of the seven to nine countries that I work with. with uh, regulation changes every two months or sometimes every two weeks in at least one of them. Some of the regulations could be the banking regulation, it could be the taxation one, which is the easier one because my clients would love paying taxes. They, they only want to be, mainly they want to be legit, seriously, because paying taxes, some will answer that, uh, big deal. Paying taxes is the way to launder money. So they want to be legit, they want to not, you know, not, you don't want to sleep well at night, so they won't be doing anything which has anything to do with anti-money laundering uh, or crime on the not identifying whatever uh, clients. And so, to and buy the license as long as the license is required. And the fact that I need to work as such as a meta lawyer or meta accountant with several countries is because when you go to each and every uh, lawyer or accountant or advisor in each of the countries, they'll be able to tell you perfectly, hopefully, the pros and cons of that country. And then you go to five different advisors in five different countries, a client is not supposed to be able to have the capabilities to compare these, those answers. So one needs like a meta professional in that sense. And I think it's a necessity which is sad because as long as each country would have a very strict and clear regulation in all aspects um, for, that, for these activities, then it would be much easier uh, to just have one lawyer and one advisor and one accountant uh, in that specific country. So I'm going on um, to talk, um, I'm, I'm skipping the cases, to talk about uh, Brazil, right. In Brazil, we have to um, oblige naturally, of course, with a penal code that relates to crypto and gaming, with the law prevention of money laundering, naturally, like all countries, and the crimes against national financial systems as well, which is interesting. And I don't know if you know, but um, one of my friends here told me that gaming and gambling is, is an industry by itself. But horse gaming in Brazil, apparently, is not a sport. And it's not even regulated by the regulator who's in charge of gambling or maybe sports. Do you know, I have, besides the one who knows that, does anyone know what kind of, what ministry in, uh, in the government uh, observes and regulates um, the, the gambling over horse racings? Do you know? Well, I can tell you it's going to be hell of a fun. The Ministry of Agriculture. Would you believe that? See, you're laughing. Why are you laughing? Because my automatic response to that was that, hey, usually the ministry in, in charge of that, to regulate that, is the one that should be taking care of the public, of gamblers, players, bettors, the people. No. But a Ministry of Agriculture, whom should he or she be taking care of? I know it's a he, but I'm trying to be politically correct in an American way. They should take care of the animals, the, st <laughs> the safety of the animals. So we don't mind you betters if, if you bet wrongly or well or, or good or bad. doesn't matter. We don't care that. The, I'm not saying really we don't care. We, should, like we care less. 
of how fair the game is or not. I'm kidding here, don't kill me. But what I should really care about is the well-being of the horse. So I can only give a funny sentence about this. If you're betting and gaming or opening a business regarding uh, horse racing, you know, make sure you, you have a lot of vegans uh, supporting you and playing with you. It'd be a great marketing tool. All right, so um, before I wrap up, I want to tell you, we have a lot of gaming regu uh, re registration, <laughs> regulation and legislation um, uh, recently that have been changing. The previous regulation that was in, um, it's been on for several years already, but only last week we have, uh, there was released one of the newer, newer changes regarding sports betting. And you know, on May and June, July, they're going to be published, or well, supposedly that, that's the plan. I hope they hold up to the plan. Um, the new ordinances uh, to follow on that uh, regulation. And there's going to be a lot of changes, which I think are, that's terrific. Because finally, we have the rules of what will be right, what will be wrong. What will be interesting would be to see how we can combine, if we so choose, the developing regulation regarding AI, which is fascinating and overwhelming and is very new with those regulations. Because that those regulations, these regulations, do not yet adhere to and, and take care of uh, the AI regulation, privacy, uh, IP rights, uh, the, the, I'll say the hygiene of the data sets that uh, you need to work with, the analysis, could you use AI analysis, could you use AI for fake or non-fake players, it does not relate to that yet. And it needs to because technology, as I mentioned, runs much faster than any re uh, regulation, none whatsoever. So I'm skipping the definitions. I'm just showing you that I know them, at least that. <laughs> so um, when we want, I just skip them to you see that we have them. Um, when we want to create new gaming capabilities, new betting, gambling, capabilities and or to combine it with crypto, I have a bit of a different uh, uh, opinion than my great uh, colleague uh, Kao um, regarding do, to do uh, uh, combine them together because you're paying your advisors already. So let them just work more for that um, and get that because it'll be easier to show everyone the similarities because when people trade with crypto, they don't get the fact that they need to get those jetons or things that you use um, with uh, when you gamble. They don't get it because they see that as money. But if you tell them, hey, listen, it's just like any, any, ga any gambling, then they'll get it much better and then you can issue your tokens. So that's a business point of view. Um, and just have us, the lawyers and uh, the accountants, work harder, that's it. Um, revenues, I'll skip that and um, I'll see if you have any questions, usually. If I, s if I ask a, an open question, do you have any questions, then everyone is, uh, is embarrassed to, to raise a hand. Therefore, I'm allowing only two, but only stupid questions. I'm not going to get any smart question. So only people who have any silly question, please raise your right hand. Because if you're not going to do it, I'm going to ask that silly question. Amazing. Thank you, yeah, go, go ahead. Either shout or I'll, I'll repeat your question or you get a mic. I saw some tokenization wording, but you skip. <laughs> Time I was. I think that Sigma. one is extremely important. Thank you. From the Brazil perspective, is tokenization considered a security? Well, it depends whom you're asking. Remember the US point of view? I'm asking you and the Brazil. No, no, uh, yeah. depends which regulator you're asking. Very similarly to the US, unfortunately, um, there are different th that same token could be considered differently. And the way to deal with that, to, to, to work with that, besides just saying, I don't know, or, or it depends, would be to analyze the core basics of it. What does that token do? It's very similar to the US uh, talking about um, um, the test of whether a token is a security or utility. Um, so by what it does. Um, I really hope the US uh, tests the of how it tests will not be the ones to be considered here yes. because they're way too wide. Um, but uh, so the answer is it depends on what that your token will be doing. 
what it serves. Great question, by the way. Unfortunately, it wasn't a silly enough, so I want a more silly question. Yeah, Carl, Carl you can't do that. All right. All right. <laughs> Hold on. Speak to the mic so that you'll get it recorded. What is the stupidest thing that you see your clients do? And you, you're <gasps> like, I mean, you're like, you've got the coffee, you're at the screen, you're like, what am I doing? What are you doing? Like, what the heck, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, this would be a 50 minutes long list, but I'll try to take <laughs> really the top thing. I've heard so many people saying, oh, I was um, trading f on 2011 or 2013, back at Bitcoin, well, big Bitcoin times uh, when it was like nonsense. And my friends, they didn't know how to get into uh, Mt. Gox, the pre that, that exchange that was there a very long time ago. They didn't know how to do it, so they gave me money, so I'll do it for them. So I did it on my name for them. And I got this guy on Telegram, it wasn't Telegram then, but I'm just giving the examples of now. And I bought some crypto, mainly it was Bitcoin back then, and it just cost about $5 or so, so I paid him in cash. And my, uh, uh, you know, grass or, or, or joint dealer, um, he wanted to get paid with uh, some of my Bitcoins. And now, when it's worth, I'd say, $7.8 million, uh, my holdings, and I want to sell it for fiat in any exchange, maybe even a regulated exchange, but my bank won't get it. So, this would be quite silly. The more silly would be the ones who had purely clean, we're not saying black and white nowadays, we're saying green and red, so purely green ledger, purely green uh, a wallet with crypto that was only uh, mined or self-mined, or purchased in, a, in Coinbase or Germany, Kraken, very regulated exchanges, for example. Just an example, I'm not sh sure enough of them, not getting anything from them. And then he had dirtied up his wallet by receiving a lot of crypto from people who just wanted you know, to buy one of his apartments, it's a real estate uh, dealer, and they didn't really want to say hello and how are you doing to the IRS, the local IRS, for example. And then it kind of screwed, excuse my French, the whole wallet all together and uh, has put dirtier uh, funds over there. So these would be just very too few examples uh, of those. And I'm not even talking about all the ones who said, oh, come on, when I, our token is not going to be a security. All the other professionals, the other lawyers are telling me it's going to be fine. You know, nobody even knows what it is. Nobody's going to know, you know, that nobody's going to know thing. And how would the authorities ever know what I've done? The blockchain is anonymous, right? Anonymous, right? No, it, is, it ain't, right? You, see, you can see anything there. Or whoever gets to understand, they're stupid enough or something like that. Never underestimate your rival, and specifically not the ones who are keeping the, the public safety. So, um, so these would be the ones. Thank you for your questions. Thank you. I've been Jaguar Egal. Thank you for your time.